Peculiar attention to something which is uh, becoming very common uh, amongst us. Uh, we're talking cancer, but this time around, we're looking at a special, a, spe- a particular type of cancer. So, October every year is designated as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now, why is it so? Well, my guests will be able to tell me. Uh, but apart from just uh, talking about breast cancer awareness, we're trying to see how we can navigate through the support and resources in Nigeria. Nigeria's healthcare system, things that we can do if we come across this kind of situation. So joining me on the phone line this morning, I have uh, Dr. Bolanli Adigbuiga. She's consultant, clinical and radiation oncologist, and she's the head of the brachytherapy unit of uh, the NSIA Luth Cancer Center. Dr. Adigbuiga, nice to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Victor Terry. Nice to be back here. Wonderful. So, happy Saturday to you. Same to you. Thank you. All right. Okay, then. So, let's talk about the uh, NSIE uh, Luth Cancer Center. How are things faring with the center, by the way? Yeah, the center is getting better and better by the day. And then we are attending to more patients. Impro- uh, equipment are uh, improving and the more success stories on our part. Which is very, very Thank good. You. So for those who do not know the NSIA Luth Cancer Center, what services do you guys offer? Okay, so NSIA Luth Cancer Center is a PPP arrangement between NSIA and the Lagos University Teaching Hospital to revamp the cancer radiotherapy department to make it a one-stop, world-class cancer center in nigeria and is about the most equipped in most uh, in this sub-saharan africa so we actually treat cancers of various type from for children to adults and then there's also other treatments ranging from chemotherapy to radiotherapy we have brachytherapy we have counseling we have a psycho oncology we have a um, genetic uh, testing because it's a inside loose there are other tests that there's a surgical part of surgical oncology there's gynae oncology there's pathology there's a one-stop breast cancer so it's an all-inclusive uh, cancer center all right then i'm sure we'll talk about uh, some of these terminologies uh especially <laughs> the brachytherapy which you preside or you see prepare Stand over, but let's now you know tilt the conversation on the subject of this cause, and we're talking about breast cancer, and this is the awareness month. So, Doctor Adebuega, is there any reason why October has been designated as Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Okay, so uh, October is a is worldwide is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and it's basically because breast cancer is the commonest cancer in human being, both male, female, young and old, all combined. And then there's a lot that can be done to prevent and to present early such that we can have cure. Mm. So that's the essence of driving the awareness, making people come in early, maybe, maybe uh, get used to their body, know when abnormality arises, get tested, and when the cancer is confirmed, where to get the right treatment such that the cure rate can also increase. So you can confirm for me that all over the world, breast cancer is number one in terms of the cancer yes. family. Yes, all over the world, breast cancer is number one. All right, so can you prove that to me? How common is it across the world? Well, like in Nigeria, it's responsible for over 20% of all cancers altogether. Is the commonest in women, is the commonest in both male and female combined together. So mm. like in Nigeria, like the last status, over 16,000 new cases detected. So at least over 22.7% of all cancers are due to breast cancer. Wow. Wow. So we're talking every year we have so many people that are diagnosed with breast cancer and then we have others that also lose their lives as well. Yes, because uh, breast cancer as the incidence is, incidence is increasing. And uh, unfortunately, in this part of the world, the mortality is also increasing, basically because people present late and then when they come in, there's no fund and they don't even know where to seek for the right treatment. So they are being mismanaged before getting to the right place. By the time they are getting to the right place, there's no fund. So it's actually making our own picture so gloomy compared to the rest of the world. So somebody will be asking a question this morning. What causes breast cancer then? 
Okay, so breast cancer, the causes actually vary. Some there might not be. We might talk about risk factors. There is some. It actually runs in some family. So there, there might be family, possible family history, especially for those that have a first relation family affected by breast cancer. They may have an abnormal gene like BRCA gene that runs in the family that may make the chances of developing breast cancer increase and other other things that can be narrated, hereditary, hereditary. But other factors that may make the chances of breast cancer increase may be those that have uh, early uh, obesity can be a cause, smoking, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and then uh, early, uh, those that, that do not have enough children, they do not breastfeed well. Right. And uh, those that have had uh, other benign breast, ca uh, breast diseases that are not well, well treated, these among other factors might be reasons for developing breast cancer. All right. So let's dissect now the organ really called the breast. Uh, it's common to both male and female. So how come the cancer is more interested in women? Okay, so I will basically say that uh, breast cancer is actually commoner in a, in a female. Maybe so we can say because females have more breast tissue, more gland compared to males. So like if you have 10 breast cancer cases, nine of them is going to be female, why only one will be male. But then it's just to tell us that males are not exonerated males do develop breast cancer and unfortunately because males don't pay particular attention we have more mortality because they come in later than compared to their male female counterparts right. so both male and female can develop it but i believe maybe because breast is bigger the gland is larger in female right. most likely that may be a reason so and then other hormonal factors actually now contribute to having it more in females. All right. So you're, you're revealing to us this morning that men too can come down with breast cancer. That's what it means. Yes. All right. So what are the signs? How will I know or how will someone know that he's likely coming down with breast cancer? Okay. So the signs might be why we are even moving to the era of not waiting for signs. So we prefer people to come in when they do not even have signs. And this is actually possible because of this awareness we are creating for people going for screening so that before it becomes having symptoms, people are presented. Because by the time it's having symptoms, it has been in the body for a longer period, for a number of years. It has grown bigger. It has spread further inside before coming outside. So coming to the sign, breast cancer is a, a cancer that we don't expect people to come in late. Why? Because breast is outside. It's something you can see. Right. So changes in the skin. Any skin discoloration, if it's getting darker, some is looking like the back of the orange, like orange peel. It might be changes in the nipple. If the nipple is getting inside retracting, some may, may also have discharge on the on the on the nipple. It might be whitish, it might be bloody, she might even be normal clear fluid, and you are not breastfeeding, you don't expect there to be changing uh, to be discharged. Others might just be increase in size of the breast. So when you look at your breast on daily basis, you're able to see is one breast bigger than the other. Naturally, the left breast is usually bigger. But when you are conversant, you know when the bigger when this size is no longer the same. Mm. And then maybe the breast is not the one that is getting bigger. So other thing might be breast lump, which is the commonest that people have. So when you examine your breast, you know what it feels like. And so when there's an abnormal thing, the breast lump can vary in size. And the breast lump does not necessarily be only in the lump. It might even be lump in the armpits. Because oh. uh, the, one of my one of my uh, teachers of blessed memory will say the armpit and the breast they are like cousins. Okay. So some actually present with lump in the armpit, wow. not only in the breast, which it, because the armpit is what drains the breast. So this and the, on, 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 unfortunately, some people now present with when it has now become an ulcer, when there's an obvious ulcer in the breast, on the breast or the skin. And then other may also present with signs when it has spread to other organs. Right. When they, now, when they are spread to the lung, they now have cough, there might be breathing difficulty, they might be getting too tired. It might have spread to the liver and it's presenting with yellowness of the eye. The liver is big. It might spread to the bone and people are presenting with bone pain or fracture. It might spread to the brain right. and they are having vomiting and seizures. Right. Which so the commonness is actually on the breast. Itself. So let's look at it again. So, and, and I'm curious here, Dr. Adibuiga. So can we say the bigger the breast, the more likely it will come down with uh, breast cancer? No, 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 no. But there, there's something we call density dense breast. A few, a few studies have shown that 
people that have dense breast tissue, but it's not about the size. And dense breast is only picked either on ultrasound or mammogram, but the size of the breast does not mean that it's going to likely develop so, cancer. So, so ladies who are listening to me right now and they are having the smaller size, it's not it's not time for them to sing Uru yet to say, well, I am free of breast no, cancer. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. Um, we'll talk about what uh, even younger ones should do because I've got some young ladies in the studios that are listening to you right now. But is breast cancer age discriminatory? Or can we talk about at what age does it present? Okay, usually breast cancer is usually common among the middle age group from 50 and 60 and above. Usually most cancers develop at that age. But unfortunately, we are having breast cancer from a lower age group. We have seen people in their 20s coming down. You and mean then it? Basically, yeah, people 20s. in their 20s coming down, yeah, with breast cancer. And then so we are having a younger age group. And unfortunately, in this age group, the type they have is usually the very aggressive one. If you have patients less than 40 years coming down with breast cancer, the type is usually more aggressive. Okay, and so some of them may even have family history and then other BRCA gene uh, mutation that right. will be responsible. We have younger I, age group. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to interrupt you there because uh, you just said it now, aggressive. Uh, and that means we, we have different types of breast cancer. Is that what it means? Yes, yes, there are different types of breast cancer. So that's why we tell people it's not just enough for you to say there's a lump. The lump must be tested. And so apart from the first test to, detect, to confirm that there's breast cancer, there are other tests you now do to tell us the type of breast cancer. There are four major types. So when I talk about the aggressive one, they are the triple negative. In this case, they cannot, they cannot respond to hormone treatment. They cannot respond to targeted therapy. So they are usually left with uh, uh, chemotherapy to, to use to treat them and surgery and radiotherapy. So that particular type, subtype, is usually the aggressive type. And that's the one we usually find commoner in the younger age group among the black women. Wow. Wow. Okay. So well, we have that type, but then we, we, have, we have the aggressive ones, like you said. Yeah. All right. So in all of this, is breast cancer curable? Yeah, breast cancer can be curable. And uh, so before we talk about cure, there's a bit of prevention. Okay. So knowing your family history and then knowing some other genetic testing. So we have seen people that are going for um, for prophylactic mastectomy. Why? Because breast cancer develops in the breast. Mm. So if there's no breast tissue, chances of developing breast cancer. So those that know their good family history and then they have done further tests to know that, okay, I have the chances of developing this they actually go ahead and remove both breasts. So that one is also there. And then there are some hormones, there are some hormones that have been used to, there are studies that have shown that some hormones can be taken, those, those that have the high risk to take it to reduce their chances. So that's part of a prevention. Okay. But apart from prevention, breast cancer is also curable, but the key is early presentation. So early, early detection. detection saves lives. That's what we're saying. Early detection saves lives. And like I said, early detection is not when we wait when the, signs and symptoms are there we want people to get screened and when they get screened they detect it even before it becomes before it becomes manifest so and this one comes to the first one is breast cancer is one of the things you can even detect yourself it's one of the it's not like eating cancer it's obvious all right so self breast examination okay just hold on one second just hold on one second we'll talk about okay. that there's a flash update coming in here it says broken down 20 foot containerized truck with gear problem at odogun inwards uh, oguluntu it has no effect on traffic at the moment so a tow truck has been contacted while traffic managers on ground doing the needful uh you can make that inwards uh, ikurudu those of you that are heading towards o Ikurudu, you will meet that at Odogun. Uh, that's in what's Ogunu. So, so take note of that as you drive through that location. So you're saying that um, self-detection is one key factor that can be used. Is that early, right? Early, de early, early detection, detection saves lives. All right, just a second. So early okay. Yeah, so let me see. There are some calls that... Uh, are trying to come in 08099120777. Even as we talk about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, you can bring in your questions as well to ask the uh, specialists that we have in the studios. Hello there. Good morning. Okay, so that uh, line is uh, very, very bad. Uh, please try and reconnect with us. I have uh, Dr. Bolanle Adigboiga. Uh, she's a consultant, clinical, and... Uh, 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 oncologist, right? Uh, clinical and radiation oncologist 
with uh, the NSIA Luth Cancer Center. And we are actually talking about the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, which is this October. Uh, we're doing our own bit to sensitize people so that you know what it is. You heard from her there. Uh, it's not just uh, women that come down with uh, breast cancer. Men can also do, even though the, uh, the the prevalence is very, very low. Hello there. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. This is Evangelist Abayo, sir. Hey, Evangelist Abayo. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, I wanted to ask my dad a question, sir. Yes, go ahead. But I have uh, my friend like this. His wife needs to put money on the breast cancer. And the person has a cancer at that time. But I don't, I don't know what he said that he was there in the region now. He said, I think I'm going to do about that. Okay. All right. D just listen. We'll find out for you. Okay. Uh, no matter, All right, then. Uh, so, Dr. Adebuega, uh, he's talking about the woman who probably probably used to put uh, money, <laughs> or probably used to hide the practice of hiding money in the breast. And uh, eventually, she came down with breast cancer. Uh, first off, could that uh, habit have been a, a, resu a resultant effect of that? No, there's no study to to say to suggest such. So I'm sure the woman. So maybe it, she's able to detect eventually because she's always putting her hand inside her breast. And uh, so I'm sure one of the days she's go put put money. She actually noticed that there's something stolen there. Okay. So there's nothing. It, it doesn't cause that. No connection. No, not at all. Okay. So you're saying women can detect this by doing self-examination. Is that correct? Yes, self-breast examination, okay. which goes from just inspection, standing in front of the mirror, and uh, standing at Kimbo, even just standing in front of the mirror to look at the size, then look at the shape, look at the nipple, look at the skin, if there's any color, Raise it up, raise up your hand, and uh, so that's just examination, the uh, uh, inspection. Hello? After that, okay. you go there just a second. and you feel it. Yeah, okay. just a second, Dr. Bonali. Another call is on the line. Hello there, good morning. Yeah, hello, good morning. All right, what's your name? My name is Chinedu. Chinedu, where are you calling from? Chinedu, Chinedu. Yeah, Chinedu. I said, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Mikaja Jerry. All right, so we're having more men, uh, more men callers. Than females, <laughs> uh, it's uh, supposed to be breast cancer, but men are the ones calling. All right, Chido, uh, go ahead. <laughs> All right, um, I just want to find out. Uh, I know men don't have breast per se, but we have breast tissue. Mm. So, is it possible for a man to develop breast cancer? Well, she, ju she just confirmed that earlier that men do oh, okay. have okay, breast cancer, so. even though the prevalence rate is very, very low. Uh, but men oh, okay. can also come down with breast cancer. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Do, Thank you uh, very much. All right. Help to take care of your wife or perhaps your partner uh, and <laughs> and do right, some yeah, self-examination okay. too. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, uh, Chile, you were just trying to confirm if uh, men do come down with breast cancer. And Dr. Adekwe, you, you said that earlier that yes, they do, right? Yes, men do come down with breast cancer, only that we have more in females than men. Right. Okay, so this self-examination, uh, can can men help to do the self-examination as well for their wives? Why? Well, it's allowed, and then men should even be encouraged to do so. For instance, and it's vice versa, I once had a male patient that came down with breast cancer. Unfortunately, he was a widower at that time. And one of the things he said is that if only his wife would have been, would have been alive, he would have detected early. Because why would definitely have thought so it's allowed men should and then women should also. Yeah, so in the game of love, women really touch their men's breasts. Okay, so maybe they should be encouraged to do so too. <laughs> okay, so moving forward, that should be an encouragement. Uh, there's a message here that says, Good morning, Victor and Dr. Bolanli. Are there any specific foods or diet that can help prevent breast cancer? Okay, like I said, obesity is a major is also a major contributory factor to developing breast cancer. So any diet that will make it to be obese is actually uh, to be discouraged. So as one is aging because your activity is reduced, so you should also cut down on your fried food, on your fatty food, and take more 
fruits and vegetables in your diet. Right. That does not mean that some diets are no, no. Everything should just be done in moderation. And exercise is also encouraged oh. so that you are not obese. Yeah. All right. So when we compare the breast of the man and the woman, I mean, uh, for men, the, the, the size is um, uh, infinitesimally <laughs> small, so to say. So what is it going to be examining? No, so they are just to check. They meant to come down with breast lump. So they actually can have lump, a swelling in the breast that was not there. And then some would notice that one size is uh, the breast size is getting bigger than what it used to be. Mm. And then it might be the nipple might also go inside or skin changes. There may be discoloration on the skin. So men should also check for what women is checking. So only that it's going to be more pronounced in women. All right, then 80 I need women. I need to hear from women because we're talking breast cancer awareness. And for those of you, though, or if you see someone that have come down with uh, breast cancer, what kind of support systems were you able to provide? Uh, Lagos Traffic Radio, this one says, Good morning. At what age should women start getting screened for breast cancer? Shade is sending that one in from Computer Village. Okay, so usually we say between 40 and 50 years. So that's one of the recommendations. From 40 years, you can start doing breast ultrasound because by then the breast is still dense. You're likely going to see something. But by 50 or 45, you can change to mammogram. But those that have family history, they should actually check earlier. So they should check. If their mates are starting mammogram at 50, they can start there at 45 or 40. If their mates are starting ultrasound at 40, they can start a bit earlier if they have a strong family history. Mm, all right. Uh, Balale Adekwega, are you still there? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, more um, more reactions that are coming in. This one says, good morning. At what age should women start getting screened for breast cancer? Okay, I think uh, uh, we've taken that. That's from Shadi. We've taken that, yeah. Right. This one says, good morning. Is it true that breast cancer is more curable than other forms of cancers? Abimbola is sending that one in. Yeah, breast cancer is actually very curable too. Why? Because it's, a, it's an organ that is outside. So chances of early detection is higher. And then, so it should be more curable than internal organ. However, a cancer that is the most curable for now is cervical cancer Ooh. through different means of cure. Uh, because ca breast cancer still has what we call tumor biology that even after you, see, you feel you have done or you have done most things, it might still reoccur. Right. Not like cervical cancer, but breast cancer is also highly curable. And do we have the resources? Do we have the, uh, the facilities to cater for breast cancer in Nigeria? Yes, in Nigeria of today, breast cancer can be treated from beginning to the very end here in Nigeria. So going from the detection, we have tests to detect, to characterize the cancer, to know the type of cancer. From pathology, we have surgical, surgical expertise to do that. Then we have chemotherapy, all the agents, and then most of the drugs are very, very available. Then we have radiotherapy machine also in, at least in um, nsi youth cancer center we have radiation oncologists we have surgical oncologists that can take care of breast cancer so breast cancer the whole continuum from the prevention to the early detection to the treatment even to the survivorship can all be done in nigeria of today all right then one of our very regular listeners is sending in a message he's a man not woman uh Ulu Aloko says good morning sir please how does this affect a nursing mom especially as it concerns breastfeeding the kids. It says, uh, two, are there any first aid attention in case of early detection of cancer? Thanks. Oluwaloko. Well, not, I think the question is not so clear, but I'll just say this about breastfeeding mother. Mm. It's actually one of the dilemmas we have. Why? Right? Because we may still come down with breast cancer even just during breastfeeding, and it might be, it might be mistaken for thinking that there are breast changes during breastfeeding. So what we tell people that if you feel something abnormal, please get to the doctor. Apart from your own cell breast examination, you can also move to a, 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 an expert to actually check for you. And then when people have breast cancer, can they breastfeed? Maybe not with that breast. And then maybe when they're on treatment. So it's going to be taken beyond that because chemo can actually get to women but for women that are pregnant too mm. they can still be treated for breast cancer there are some chemo that are safe 
there's a way that we can work with the gynecologist to know what they can take at the particular time. So both pregnancy and breastfeeding should not disturb breast cancer detection and treatment. All right. This one says, happy weekend. Please, Dr. Bolanle, can a teenager develop breast cancer? Thanks. Ayodeji, sending that one in. Funny enough, never say never is rare among teenagers, but then things do happen. Things a do happen. A teenager can develop. Yeah, unfortunately, even in the, I've seen one even in the US when I went for a training, wow. I was surprised. A wow. teenager with breast cancer. So it can happen, only that is very rare. All right. Ebun here, Ebun says, How is NSIA Luth Cancer Center working to improve breast cancer survival rates in Nigeria? Okay, so in our bit, part of it is creating the awareness. And then in our bit, we are doing a lot of social media. You can check on our social media handles to where we pass out uh, educational materials and stuff like that. And then major one we have done is the fact that we have changed the narrative. There's now, people don't have to travel out of Nigeria to get treated for breast cancer. Right. Because what we lacked before was the machine. And so now, we're even moving from ordinary that breast cancer people has to do a patient with breast cancer has to do mastectomy we are saying that there can be conservative surgery if you present early we don't have to remove all the breast so mastectomy so means means thing. removing the breast right removing the whole breast wow but then now because we have this machine we have these expertise both in surgery in chemotherapy and in, uh, in radiotherapy we don't have to remove all the breast if wow. you present early we don't have to remove all the breast all right and then we do the minimal surgery under six weeks, you are supposed to do the radiotherapy, and we have the machine on ground in NSI lose cancer. All right, so that's... all of this is possible in Nigeria. All right, all right. Then, as we gradually wind to the end, Doctor Adigwega, I, I see you are a specialist in brachytherapy as well. So, what does that mean? Brachytherapy is a form of radiotherapy where the treatment is from a short distance. So, funny enough, even in breast cancer, there's a place of brachytherapy. So here, the radiation is delivered inside the tumor itself in the breast. And then the one we are doing presently now is for the cervical cancer. When patient comes, we have done the radiotherapy from outside. In the last two weeks of treatment, when the tumor has shrunk and has almost reduced, we take the radiotherapy inside the patient's private part into the cervix and we get it treated. And so with the, all of these treatments, cervical cancer is curable in Nigeria. Brachytherapy is also used in prostate cancer. If they come in early, it improves our cure rates. And then survival sh survival ship is also increased. All right. As we round this off now, what's the message to our people, uh, both young ladies and even uh, everybody that's listening to us right now? What what's your message, Doctor Adegwe? The message is that early detection saves lives. So people should not people should get used to themselves. Examine yourself, and then at least once a year, get a doctor to examine you. Once a year, do your medical check. Any detection saves life. And when you see it, get to the specialist to get treated All so right. that we can change the narrative. Okay. Then. Thank you very much. We'll leave it to that for now. Dr. Bolanle Adegwenga, thank you. Adegwenga Garada, thank you so much for taking us on this excursion this beautiful Saturday morning. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right. Yeah. So I've spoken, or we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Bolanle Adegwenga. And of course, she's... Um, uh, like we did talk about earlier on on the program, she is, uh, uh, of course, a consultant, clinical and radiation oncologist and also head of the brachytherapy uh, unit at NSIA Luth Cancer Center. We have to go. Mike James has produced the program this morning. I have uh, some interns uh, in the studio. Lola, right? Okay. And... Uh, Right. Funke. Okay, Funke. All right, uh, Lola and Funke, uh, both of them in the studio as well. Afe John is of our social media unit. Same for Kwame Shodunke. Our executive producer is Tyra Conley. My name is Victor Terry. Have a splendid weekend. I'm